Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. We're going to be covering the DX versus Jedi push on their server. Here we're showcasing just a quick push from the Jedi side here on the right, while on the left is the defending side of the DX members. So let's get into today's video. I hope you enjoy this episode of The War Room with more PvP commentary and breakdown to hopefully teach you guys on how to be a better PvP player. Hello everyone. Yes, if you just checked it out at the ending of that bit of the video, you can see the power rankings of the Alliance. You can just quickly pause the video and check it out of who is going to be fighting. So you're going to see a lot of basically in and out of chat as well because we were live streaming while we were recording this. So there's a lot of basic footage here that we're going to be covering today for the episode. So as you, as you heard, we're going to be covering DX versus Jedi. And it's in this, again, crucial dead zone, which is this bridge crossing where a lot of AoE will basically fire on. And as you guys know, if you've not figured it out so far, in close spaces, you are going to die, right? The amount of AoE fighting from mages, artifacts, and other different triggers in the game causes a ton of damage to those units, right? So you've got to make sure you're nicely spread out within that murder ball. And right here, you're going to be able to see again the DX guys in their major tight ball on the other side of the bridge. And when obviously there's some movement, they're going to be a bit more spread out. You can see the DX guys as well. All we're doing here, if you're wondering, is trying to bait some of these Jedi players to go in and fight and basically get out of position, right? Because right now you can see the Southern Light, Northern Light and all the other members of the Jedi Alliance there nicely spread out in a good ball, right? And they need to stay disciplined because if someone goes out of position while the others are not ready to really protect them, obviously you can see this DX ball on the other side is going to be ready to pounce. What we're going to see here as well, really good bit of positioning awareness, right? And this is what the power of flying units are. So you can see Finn here using the flying units to actually position himself more into the water now. And by able to go where he is, we're going to be able to see him actually trying, if he wants to, poke this unit. And you can see as the arrow is drawn, he can now target, if he really wants to, this infantry march and target these guys on the edge of the riverbank if they're not paying attention, right? And for him, that could be some free kills for him right there in the river. And it makes him really hard to target, right? Cavalry and infantry can't target him. And as you can see now, the fighting is starting. So Finn is just behind my camera, unfortunately. But at the same time, you've got all of the Jedi members here starting to push onto the bridge, right? Because right now you saw the front line of the DX members basically holding where they're going to be. So Jason Gee right now is being that frontline tank. But one thing if you take to note, he isn't moving. So this is actually really, really bad. This is a really bad thing you can see happening right now by Jason Gee. And the reason why this is really bad for you guys to be doing is as you can see, the Jedi guys are rocking Alilia. And these are mage marchers that are obviously using the most range in the game. And they've got some insane AoE. And just like you saw, Jin there was too close to that infantry unit. So it's allowing these guys to now use their mage marchers, charge up their skills. And as you saw, it hit the Jason Gee march, but the Scorch trigger and some of the AoE then bled onto Jin's Kanara, and that caused him to take unnecessary damage for no reason. So these guys here now, as you can see, are going to be basically moving around, pouncing onto Jason G. And as you can see, all of these guys now walking away, taking a considerable amount of Scorch damage for no reason, right? Just because these guys are close by. So again, you're going to see this happen again right there with Dolphin Jr. That they just took 2.5k damage from the AoE. So here is a prime example of what not 
to do if you're trying to be a frontline unit because even though this guy feels like he's getting some good trades because of the counter attack damage he's getting back he is making his alliance members and alliance around him lose more troops than this is worth and as you can see now if this guy does die which he will do that's one less frontline right one less frontline does allow if they really need to the jedi members here to push and go forward into this fight so we're going to see some other marches here you can see some of the flying marches as well on what they're allowed to do so like mephisto just did there he was able just to move instantly onto the bridge without having to walk all the way around right while we've got that going you can see the jedi members that were still basically here going back from the original point into the fight again so they're having basically a nice refresh of their troops so this is going to be the fight again we're going to go into the next part i hope you've enjoyed the breakdown so far of their fight in part one we're going to go into part two when all the chaos does break out and you can see a lot more open field commentary here is just again a little breakdown for you guys on the personal power on some of the members we just saw as well as the big boy nefisto but he isn't in this fight even though you can see someone that is meh Fisto, not the N, it's an M, so just to let you guys know. So I hope you've enjoyed so far part one of the war room of this today's episode. Let's move on though into part two and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Welcome back. So yes, as you can see, we've got now a different style of the exact same room, right? So you can see we're on the exact same bridge as we were fighting on. But basically what happened in that Jedi experience while we were streaming, there wasn't really any other fighting. But, as you can see, BDM and GD are having the exact same fight here. So what we're gonna do is basically progress it and basically hypothetically, you know, talk about if this was the Jedi and DX fight now, because you can see this is the exact same setup and you can see these flying marchers by Takemo here on the GD side being able to fly on the river, target who he wants, and then back out really, really nicely for his alliance. But you can see these guys are in the dead zone, right? The GD guys are in the dead zone, and this is what I was talking about. You can see now the power of that BD murder ball actually destroying march by march because of the AOE hitting multiple units here this murder ball is going to destroy them right the amount of aoe we were talking about in part one now is being showcased really well here and you can see gd losing a bunch of marchers and at first obviously they had a bunch of marchers looking almost equaling in power but just like that you see all the different aoe abilities from the artifacts and the majors and just like that they've gone they disappeared and this is the power of the bridge right so now you can see the bdm alliance technically own all of this bridge and this is the new dead zone if there's going to be any other future fighting but this is now the progression right this is where we get to see a progressive state from this combat situation because if you are trying to think what you can be doing now as an officer just think You've just won a really major fight and your troops there, even though you've got that long refresh timer, which we were discussing in the first episode of the War Room. Now you've got these troops basically at 50 to 60% health. You could push a little bit more forward, gain more space and hold a more defensive line, more, you know, forward compared to before. Because when you look now, in this map we're going to obviously draw out the territory right and you can see how the bd alliance members have got their top side here while the gd guys are going to be at the bottom and you can see they're gonna to have to basically control all of this zone because if they can control all of this zone here right now where the red lines is that's going to allow them to then push forward and take control of this four runners abbey and this is actually a really important thing because if they're able to do that as you see the mount helios area when we look at the jd side they need to push through that zone and now the bd side would be blocking it and the bottom side where the alliance um, zone of the friendlies are would be blocked as well. So you can see here that the fight 
for the middle is very, very crucial because if they don't get that center zone where we were drawing the initial map for JD's hopeful plan, it will then allow them to take control and fight both of these alliances at a nice, easy point. So right here on screen is just showcase. And like I was talking about the dead zone where the main war fighting will be occurring where that major black circle was. And that's how we're able to fight find these fights really easily. So if you're looking for servers to find some fights on, always look, as you can see, in the Kaltia name, it's bang on the T for this area. And that is where the center major fighting does occur. Because that's where two of the main bridges for both alliances need to go to to cross into that middle zone. So you can see there, as we've just drawn now, this would be the map plan or like maybe flag plan for one of the alliances, you have to wiggle your way around and go over that bridge and come across, right? And you can see why that's important because when you look at the other sides, when they go to their flag building, it's very different, right? And you're gonna be able to understand, hopefully from this video, the importance now of alliance territory and PVP fighting, right? Because in these War Room episodes, what I've been trying hopefully to do for you guys is break it down so you can see PvP commentary explained life to you and the impact on the map because the map is very obviously crucial to understanding if you're winning or losing this fight, right? Because if you're winning, you'll notice the pressure of the map is more in your favor and you control overall more of it even if you don't have the flags there because of the amount of troops that you have in a certain position, right? So here we're going to see just the remnants of the last remaining fight where we're going to see basically the GD members and their union BLA basically regroup into this mountain crevice. And by regrouping here, it will allow them to go back and fight in this starting clip, as you can see again, right? So it's going to allow them to go back and rotate and allow that fighting to continue. So while this is playing back, um, this is just the fight we just covered for you guys. We're gonna end the video there So it's been a really good episode I hope you've enjoyed it for PvP commentary and learning something brand new today for yourselves Smash a like comment and subscribe to the channel if you've made it all the way this far I am an official Dragons content creator giving you hero guides behemoth guides any events and new stuff coming all to Call of Dragons So I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and until the next one, stay safe, stay sneaky, peace out.